bit rainy and drizzly out today. So I thought, why not make a boat? Uh, I've not made one of these yet, so I'm going to kind of uh, make it up as I go along. I did draw it out on the computer, so I have a pretty decent idea of what I'm doing. Um, it's, it's a project I've been wanting to do for a while, uh, just to test it out. And it's, it should be a, a, a fun little project for us. You can see here, I, I stack up all my wood. My kids hate sorting wood, but I keep all the scraps because from time to time we make things with those uh, scraps. But at any rate, uh, we're going to be using fence pickets for this project. And we're going to need, um, we're going to need approximately four. We're going to use uh, two fence pickets for the back of our boat. Now, when I'm designing projects, especially when I'm using fence pickets, I try to think about how, uh, how much material um, I can yield out of a single fence picket, and that will kind of determine how big my project is. In this case, we're building a, a shelf. Um, that, it's not gonna be a huge shelf, but it's gonna be pretty sizable. Um, and so, when I'm when I'm making projects with fence pickets, because they're dog-eared at the top, I don't have a full uh, six foot or seventy-two inches to work with. So, um, so thirty-four and a half inches is kind of my magic number. So when I designed this shelf, I designed with that dimension in mind. So we're going to cut two pieces uh, that are thirty-four and a half inches. And I'll be honest, I forgot what the other piece was. I think it's like 39 and something. But, but anyhow, so it's going to take two pickets to make the back of our shelf. So first thing I'm going to do is cut these two pieces to 34 and a half. And then uh, we'll go from there. So now we've cut our fence pickets. The middle one here is the 39 and three quarter. And then the two outer ones are 34 and a half. So you can see... The finished shelf is going to be a nice size of a little shelf and this is what's left over of our fence picket from our middle one so we use the two sides take up the whole fence picket very little waste and then we have this left over which we're going to utilize that for our shelves now that won't be quite enough for our shelf and that's where the additional fence picket comes into play so we're going to need three fence pickets in all but the fence picket's only $2.20 at the time of this video. So pretty inexpensive project, you know, maybe less, oh, I don't know, 10 or $15 at the very most, um, because we are gonna need um, some of these strips. And you could make these out of fence pickets. Uh, you can see they're pretty thin, um, but I used a, a two by six to make these strips, or you could use a two by four or whatever. But first we gotta finish this. So our next step then, of course, is to get the nose of our boat in place and then also get the rest of the shape of our boat. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put some lines on this board here and kind of play connect the dots. Now I have a vinyl cutter, uh, so I could, if I wanted to, cut out a piece of vinyl and make my template out of that but this is a pretty simple shape that we can do with some measurements so what we're going to do is we're going to just do it on the one board cut it out with our bandsaw or our jigsaw and then once we've refined this side we'll use it as a template for the opposite side so let me put the lines on the board the way we need them and then we'll talk about how you would do it as well now the, the woodworking plans that we have for this project have all this laid out for you. So um, if you purchase the plans, then uh, you'll have all the, all the dimensions you require. I'm gonna try and give all, you, all the dimensions here in the video as well. But just know that the woodworking plans does have all the schematics and step-by-steps on how all this goes together. So let me get the lines put on the board and then we'll go from there. All right, so let's take a look at what we have so far. So from the top of our board down, 20 and 5 eighths. 
draw a line and then draw a line every four inches all the way up. So we have one, two, three, four additional lines. And then what I've done is I've marked it. So I started right here at four and a quarter inches. Okay. And then I kind of moved on down the line here. So this one here, so we went from four and a quarter to three and three quarter. Let me make sure I'm remembering all my dimensions correctly. So we started off at the four and a quarter. Let's see if I can get that. And then we move up to four and an eighth then three and three quarter, then that is three and an eighth, and then the last one is at two. Got it. So then once we have all of those points, then what we're gonna do is just kinda use our imagination a little bit. It just kind of sketch a rounded like and we're just going to kind of use this as uh, just a, an eyeball so to speak when we go with our jigsaw so this doesn't have to be the, the fine tuning is going to be when we actually start cutting this thing out we'll make a nice smooth arc down to this point here and then from that point there it's just a straight line so that's all we got to do it's just that kind of curvature there and again we'll just draw this with a straight line and probably what i'll wind up doing is cutting this portion right here with the jigsaw and then just go over to the table saw set it up four and a quarter and just cut that straight line is probably what I'll wind up doing and then once I have this perfectly refined then we can use it for the template for the other side so let me go ahead and get this cut out and we'll go from there all right so we got our first piece of our boat shaped out real nice and you can see that that curve is a nice very gradual curve. I did just go ahead and use my jigsaw for the remaining part. I didn't pull off the table saw, but so we have that. So now what I've done is I've marked my center board here at two and three quarter, because this is five and a half wide. So I marked it at two and three quarter and just connected those two points. Now it looks like a perfectly straight line, but it's really not. It's just a very, very slight curve there. Okay. And then, like I say, we're just going to flip this over, line this up, and use this as the template for our opposite side. So let me go ahead and get that done and get it cut out. We'll go ahead and get this cut out. I'm just going to eyeball it from here to here um, because it is almost a straight line. So, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and just eyeball it and get the center cut and get this other one cut. And then when I come back, we'll have all three pieces of our back shaped to the proper size. I just wanted to show you that's freshly cut out, but you can see they're pretty identical, uh, as close as we're going to get anyhow. Um, so I'm, I'm going to give that one I just cut a little sanding right over the edge. It's just a touch, but you can see it, it, it did turn out very, very identical. Okay, so I just wanted to show you kind of how those transitions lined up pretty nicely. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and sand our middle board. And then we're going to put in all of our measurements for our shelves. So let me go ahead and get this one polished up. And then we'll mark for our shelves. All right. So what we've done here is we measured up from the bottom 13 and a quarter, and that would be to the bottom of our shelf. So the thickness of our bottom shelf will be two fence pickets thick. I just did that 
simply for aesthetics, I think that'll look good rather than one shelf, just a little bit thicker shelf. So anyhow, we're gonna be two fence pickets thick there, and then we'll have 12 inches to the bottom of this shelf, inch and a quarter, 12 inches to the bottom of that shelf. So this dimension here is 13 and a quarter, and then this dimension over here from the very bottom is 26 and a half. Now what I did was, you can see I have a little tick mark there and there at 13 and a quarter. Then I've taken a straight piece of wood, connect those two dots to then draw my line. We can't really use a square because this isn't a true square. So I measured up from here, 26 and a half, a little tick mark, a little tick mark, and then all the way across with a straight edge, okay? So that's where our shelves are gonna go. Now, this is where I would not follow the plans because almost certainly your back is not gonna be precise like the computer. So what we wanna do is we wanna physically measure from that point to that point and then cut our fence picket material that we're gonna use for our shelving to whatever that dimension is. Two of those there, do the same thing here. And mind you, this dimension from here to here should be identical to this dimension. That's not to say it's bad if it's not, I'm just telling you that dimension technically should be the same. Where it differs definitely is up here, whatever this dimension is. Again, we give it to you in the plans, but uh, in reality, if you don't make it exact, it'll be different on yours. So just go ahead and measure from that point to that point and whatever that is, Go ahead and cut your fence picket material accordingly okay and you could even you know if you don't technically want to measure you could just grab a board stick it right at that connecting point and then just mark it on this side tick and then cut two pieces that length so you don't you know because it might be a screwy dimension you know so it might be something you know, eight and three sixteenths or something like goofy like that um, but however you want to do it, measure it, scribe it, whatever. I'll probably just scribe it. That's usually what I do. Uh, rather than measure it, just line it up and mark it and cut it. So two pieces here, two pieces here, two pieces for your base. Okay. And for the depth of my shelf, I'm just going to make it the depth of a fence picket. So, you know, you can make it as deep as you want to make it. But for this example, we're just going to have just the depth of the fence picket, okay? So, with that said, let me go ahead and cut my shelves and we'll go from there. So now I have all my shelf pieces cut. We're just gonna take some wood glue and some one inch uh, narrow crown staplers, staples and staple these two pieces together and then we'll attach it to our back of our shelf. Okay, so let me show you where we're at at this point. And so what we've done here is we've put our two boards together with a little bit of wood glue and some one inch uh, narrow crown staplers. I really like my Ryobi narrow crown stapler. I use it and it, that's probably the most used tool in the shop. So uh, what we're gonna do, so I, anyhow, I've, I've put all of the boards together and I've sanded them and you can see I've given just a, a light eased edge to all of them. And I just have them positioned where they go here. So the staple is facing down. You can see there, there's six staples in this and you can see it's right there on the line. Now these two are just flush and square to the back of our shelf, but this one is not. Let me show you a little better example and get a better angle here. So you can see how on the bottom of the shelf, that point right there is flush, but up top here, it's not. So because I have my miter saw here, I'm just gonna put a light bevel on, on this end, you know, just a degree or two, knock that down. We could definitely do it with our uh, orbital sander as well, uh, once we had it mounted. But I just feel like uh, you could really see it over here a little bit better how much that extends past. So, so at any rate, 
uh, I'm just going to put a light bevel on that, uh, probably just two or three degrees. That will cut down the sanding dramatically. But what we do need to do is we need to put a temporary piece on here to hold these three back pieces together. So I'm going to put one up here, one in the middle, and one in down here. Um, hold these three back pieces together so we can mount our shelves. All right, so uh, I'm gonna put the bevel on this. I'm gonna put the cleats on uh, the back pieces here just to hold it together. And then uh, we'll talk about mounting our shelves. All right, so now you can see where we're at with this cleats. Um, I just took a piece of my cutoff and you can see it's literally just a piece of my, and so how that one inch staples just to hold it together, um, make it easier to attach these shelves. So now what I'm gonna do is put the bevel on this and then we'll go ahead and start attaching our shelves. All right, so now I have my bevel on this and you can see now it lines up pretty good on both sides. We're gonna refine it just a touch with our orbital sander, but I was surprised. I thought it was only a degree or two, but worked out to be uh, 10, about 10 degrees uh, is what I ultimately took off of it. And so I think that'll work out just fine. So like I said, I'll refine it a bit once I get it installed, refine it a bit with my orbital sander, but that gets us pretty, pretty close. So now let's go ahead and work on uh, attaching our shelves. It's going to be a little bit hard to show you because I need like four sets of hands. But basically all we're doing is um, setting up our back uh, piece of our shelf like this. And then we will take our shelf like this and I'll be able to hold the two together, you know, obviously in the right spot. Put some wood glue there and then tack it together. And once I get the first shelf on, the other shelves will be a little bit easier because it'll it, it'll actually stand up on its own at that point. But so it's pretty straightforward. Uh, but um, if you had an extra set of hands doing this, uh, that would be nice, but you can do it yourself. The only thing is just make sure that these staples, if you care about it, these I can apparently hardly see. Uh, well, this is the, you can barely see them uh, for some reason, but uh, but anyhow, have the staples facing down. Uh, like I said, if you care about that part of it, okay? So let me go ahead, um, put on uh, some ample glue, some inch and a quarter staples. And for now, that's all we're gonna do is use the inch and a quarter staples. I don't think it really gonna require screws but um, but we might come back in the end and add a few screws, but I don't think it'll be necessary. Uh, with the wood glue and the inch and a quarter staples, it'll be plenty sturdy. So I'll go ahead and get those shelves attached and then I'll show you what, the, what we're looking like. All right, this is something I did wanna show. So the, this angle and the flushness with the back of the boat at that 10 degree cut actually turned out pretty well. But if, if you wanted to refine it a bit, you could at this time with your uh, orbital sander. Now here, this transition also, I wanted to clean up a little bit and I can show you on this side. So this I've already cleaned up. So if you look real close, it's just perfect smooth transition, right? For over here, see how that's just ahead of that. So we're just gonna, smooth that out so that it's not you know when you put your sander there you see that gap we want to just smooth that and blend that in so there isn't that gap okay so you can see here we have a nice perfect transition just a couple minutes of sanding to smooth that out so uh, we do have a little bit of wood squeeze out to deal with so we're gonna get a wet rag, clean all that up. Go ahead and remove our cleats because now our shelves are holding these three boards together for our back. And then uh, we're gonna work on our nose cone. 
our nose cone is two pieces. So we'll get the nose cone in place and then we're ready uh, to put on our sides. So let's go ahead and get that done and then I'll come back and we'll move on. Okay, so here's what we came up with for our nose cone. Now, this piece here is just, so we set our miter saw at 30 degrees. I'm using a two by six because it will be the same thickness as our fence picket, okay? So, um, so at any rate, so that goes right there at the point. So we've got our, our small piece of two by six and then I glued it to our bigger piece of two by six and then to attach it, I've just got two inch and a quarter staples on both sides here to attach the little one to the big one. And then what we're gonna do on the back side, we're gonna use an ample amount of glue. So we have lots of glue, squeeze out, make sure we got good glue coverage. And then I'm gonna, on the big block, I'm gonna run a uh, two and a half inch or three and a half inch screw right down the center from the back. And, and I'm, I'm gonna use staples just to get it positioned it, but then three and a half inch screw probably um, from the backside. My concern is it's such a little piece of block, um, especially with the little guy here, that if we try to run a screw into that, then, um, then we've got issues. Um, because I think that would split in two in a second. I'm worried that this one even will, but um, but at any rate, that's that's the plan. And then you can see here, we're gonna have lots of room to staple our our sides to. So we're gonna staple there, 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 and so forth. That's one of the reasons why I also made this a little bit thicker. So we had more area to staple to rather than just that five eighths of an inch. So anyhow, that's what I'm gonna do there um, is just go ahead and I have this all diagrammed out in the drawings um, to give you more specific details on the nose cone, but there's really not a lot to it. Um, but you can see that the nose of, I deliberately made this nose of the boat here uh, at that 30 degrees. So it was easy to set on the miter saw, easy to cut and so forth. But um, so anyhow, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna attach our nose cone and then uh, we have to make our sides and put our sides on them. We're almost done. So after my second attempt, you can see my first attempt split. But after my second attempt, we did manage to get our nose cone installed. And then what I did was, is I went ahead and refined uh, our back piece so that everything lined up nice and perfectly. In fact, I'm gonna actually sand this a little bit. There's still a little bit of an edge there. So I might just go in there and hit that. This side, yeah, I might even hit this side again, just, just to line it up so it's perfect. Um, and then we'll go ahead and make our strips. So let me get that sanded down just a little bit more and then we'll get our strips made. So now we're going to go ahead and put on our strips. We're going to use four strips per side. They're an inch and a half wide. I cut this out of a two by six. And um, so we're just going to uh, put a little bit of wood glue and some inch and a quarter staples and put these strips on. We're going to start from the top and work our way down on one side. And then we might go the opposite way on the other. So let's go ahead and get our strips on. I'll show you how we do that uh, once I get them on. Well, I said I'm gonna start from the top. I'm actually not, I'm gonna start from the bottom. But what well, you can see what we've done here is we've applied some glue all along that edge. And then we'll just start at the bottom, line up our strip to the bottom of our boat and then wherever it comes to at the top, it comes to, it's gonna overhang just a little bit. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Get it attached and I'll show you what it looks like when we have it together. All right, let me show you what we've got. So we've got our back one in and I've run some staples through our, our lath, our strip into the back of our, and then right here, obviously at every shelf, okay? 
And so here, we're gonna put two more in. We put a little bit of glue on each piece. Now this, we actually took a scrap and brought that front one in flush, the one thickness of the picket. And then that will give us the exact spacing we need for two more, okay? So we'll go ahead and get those in and move on to the next step. We're almost done. I just wanted to show you what I did here. So what I did was just line it up, took the last two that we had and just kind of try to make those spaces even. And you can see there they're not. So, but that's okay. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna do one at, one strip at a time. And now that I have that spacing, I'm gonna try and make that spacing the same all the way down, pretty close to it. And then we'll come back, we'll add a couple of more staples. But I, I like to add two staples per per spot. I need another one here too. Um, but see like right there, there's two there. There's two there. So anyhow, let me go ahead and get those last couple nailed down and then we'll go from there. So there we have it. Those four strips are in place, just like we need. And then we're gonna use uh, our, we've got a saw that we can cut these to length with. I thought I had it out here, but I don't see it. I'll have to grab that saw. And then we'll go ahead and cut those to length and then we can put on our other side. But now you can see we're almost done. It's starting to look good. I do have to cut me a couple more strips because we need four strips per side. So let me go ahead and cut some more strips and then we need three more strips and then we can put our other side on. So there's our little oscillating tool. And you can see here, we've kind of started Cut that off right like so. So we're gonna go ahead and finish that up. Nip all those and then we can put our other sides on. All right, so now we have that cut flush and we're ready to go with our final pieces. So we're gonna basically re repeat the steps uh, that we did for the other side. All right, so now you can kind of see what our shelf looks like. We do have to trim off those pieces at the top. I wanna to sand just a little bit of that roughness out of there. So we'll touch that with the sander a little bit on, on the outside and on the inside. And then this will be pretty well done. So let's go ahead and do that and I'll show you the finished product. 